Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> David Bowie. Gary Shandling. Alan Rickman. Prince. Gregory Blaine. Lilith. Doesn't it feel like sometimes we're losing a lot of really good people? And for some of them, it feels like oh, way before their time. But I should say, way before we want them to go. So today, we're going to talk about and dive deeply into this thing we call life and into this thing we call death. And I know that death is not exactly a topic that people relish talking about. <laughs> it makes people uncomfortable. You don't want to think about it. And in fact, most of humanity is so fearful of it that they are in complete denial that it's ever going to visit them. But you know, I think that fear and that denial just comes from a misunderstanding of what death really is misunderstanding. You know, we, we are either taught or we pick up somewhere along the way the idea that death is the end of life. But death is no more the end of life than birth is the beginning. It's a continuum. The truth is there is a continuum. We are eternal beings. And the largest part of who we are is non-physical. Spiritual, by far the largest part of us right now. You know, this physical incarnation, this, this physical being, is really such a small part of who we really are. We can kind of think about it uh, in terms of this planet. You know, this planet to us seems huge, large. It's kind of, you know, it's all we know. But in the scheme of things, this planet is actually just a very small part of the vast expanse of space that it's spinning in. The tiny blue dot, as Carl Sagan used to say. <laughs> Anybody remember Carl Sagan? The tiny blue dot. <laughs> you know, he was referring to our perspective. If we were to see ourselves from outside the solar system, we would look like a tiny blue dot. If we were to see ourselves from outside of the galaxy, you know, have you ever seen those t-shirts that have kind of a depiction of our galaxy on it, a little dot on the side of it with an arrow leading to it saying, you are here. <laughs> have you seen those? <laughs> those are very cool. I love that. But we, we don't think about it in those terms because we are living, we're breathing, we're moving every moment of every day on this planet. And my God, what a glorious planet it is, too. By far the best in the universe. <laughs> I am certain of that. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, for, for what we've seen so far, you know, this is like the best place. <laughs> and, you know, unless you're Carl Sagan or Neil deGrasse Tyson or something, you know, we don't really see it in that larger perspective because we're immersed in it. The same is true for our physical body, our physical being. You know, we're just so familiar with our own face and our own hands and our skin and the pain in our knees and the thing in our back and, you know, whether we're digesting or not digesting certain foods and, you know, we just, we get fooled into thinking this is all there is. But it's not. You know, and then we're, we're fool, further fooled when we hear of somebody dying or when a dear friend dies. And we think, oh, they're gone. But they're not gone. They are not gone. Their human incarnation is, yes, but they've just returned back into that non-physical vibration, which was the largest part of them anyway. And it's not like they've disappeared into this huge cosmic soup. You know, they, they retain 
we retain our unique vibration. The ego identity is gone. You know, the ego is gone, but we are still, we retain that unique vibration, consciousness. People could say, well, how do you know that? I mean, you know, what do we really know? Who really knows about what happens after we die? Well, <laughs> you do, huh? <laughs> Anybody who's had a near-death experience, right? Yep. Then a lot of people are, have had near death, with clinically dead, and they've come back and shared their stories. And while a lot of those stories are kind of a little different, a little different flavor, the, the gist of it's the same. It's, it's very similar, this whole idea of kind of a detachment. There's this idea of a detachment from the body. A lot of people report uh, hovering above and looking down at the body with a sense of detachment. That, so that ego is gone, and along with it, all the pain and all the suffering and all the loss and all the attachment. But there's this consciousness that remains. And if people sort of go further into that, they report this immense love. That's the common thing. Like, just surrounded and immersed in this incredible love. Has anybody read uh, the book by that neurosurgeon, um, Eben Alexander? P Proof of Heaven, is that what it's called? Yeah. Whoa, what an adventure he had. <laughs> Living Technicolor, huge adventure. It's really amazing. And the thing about what's so amazing is that he was a scientist. I mean, he was a neurosurgeon, so he was like, you know, no, there's no room in his brain for the afterlife or mystical metaphysical experiences. No. In fact, there have been people who died on his operating table who came back and reported these interesting experiences, and it was like chalked up to, oh, well, you know, the brainwave activity that happens, you know, there's just, there was no, until it happened to him. And what was interesting about him is that he, he was brain dead. He was actually brain dead. So he knew that it wasn't weird brainwave activity. It was beyond the physical, metaphysical. And he had this, this, Incredible experience of oneness with God, of oneness with all of it, and just being immersed in this unbelievable love, like you can't imagine, being immersed in this love, it's, and, and the beauty that was available, the beauty, the beauty in the love. Really, really an amazing story, and again, so many people have told us about things like this. Another way we can kind of know about this or, or get kind of a peek is, and I'm just going to say it, <laughs> non-physical entities who are channeled through uh, receptive conduits. Okay? And some that are, you know, probably the most well-known uh, in spiritual circles is Abraham who was channeled through Esther Hicks. And there's some really, if you're not familiar, you know, just kind of Google, really incredible uh, mind-expansive ideas that have been shared for years, a collection of spirits known as Abraham. And there, you know, are other channels out there, and I'm, um, I'm sure, you know, some of you are much more familiar with this than I am. And, uh, and the, it, when I... What I always feel about that is that the channeled messages are as accurate as the channeler is clear, you know? And really, there's not that many people in the world who are that clear, who can get beyond their thoughts, you know? So, but there are some. So I always say, take what you hear, whether it's from a non-physical entity or from a physical person, including myself and Re Reverend Rosemary, <laughs> you know, don't take anything on face value. Bring it into your own awareness, into your own, you know, soul, and see if there's some resonance of truth in there. If there's some, you know, is that, does that feel true to me? The inner wisdom is within you. You know, if so, great, that could add to 
your spiritual growth, your understanding. If not, kick it out. You know, the wisdom is within you. So apparently, um, Lilith, and if you're new to this community, um, you may not know who I'm speaking of, but I'll just sort of briefly fill you in. She, is a long, she was a long-term member of Unity Center of Peace, a beloved member. She served on the board many times. She was you know, here weaving her spiritual path with us for a while and then weaving out again. We haven't seen her in the last couple of years. Um, she was dealing with health crisis and, uh, and also her spiritual path is taking her in a different direction, but she's always been here in our hearts. Right? And so she passed a few weeks ago. And um, she actually had counseled with uh, a, a channeler, uh, somebody who channeled a divine feminine spirit. And one of the times that I visited her, she shared with me a recording of one of these sessions. And I think she shared it with me because maybe she knew I would share it with you. <laughs> and it was really this, the, 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 a band of spirits, a group of earth-focused, healing, earth-healing, divine, goddess, angelic spirits is what I could sort of describe it as. And they were awaiting her arrival with great anticipation. And inviting her to come dance with them and to share their healing journey with them. You know? And you can just sort of see it now, right? <laughs> you can see Lilith, you know, dancing with those spirits and and working with that purpose of healing, sending healing to the earth. So yeah. So why do we get you know why do we get sad when someone when we know they're fine when we, you know most likely they're having a, a, an amazing adventure because we're human you know we have those human feelings of attachment to the actual personality to that human incarnation we miss that it's loss and absolutely it is natural and healthy to feel those feelings and honor them and, you know, take as long as we don't let anybody ever tell you there's only a certain period of time that you should be grieving and then after that, no. You take as long as you need <coughs> to grieve, to go through that process. And the idea opening to the awareness of this continuity of life, opening to... Uh, an understanding of a, of a perspective, a different perspective, can really help in that process. And so the perspective is that we, all of us, have chosen to come here into this physical incarnation for a period of time, for a specific purpose, focusing our energy here for a specific purpose, and when that purpose is filled, fulfilled, we return back into that non-physical, beautiful vibration into the arms of the infinite love and focus our awareness there, our energy there for a while and you know, serve some purpose there. I have no doubt that we're serving some purpose there on the other side as well until we choose to come once again and focus part of our energy here for another purpose, or maybe it's the same purpose in a different form. You know, we have many lifetimes to get it right, <laughs> many lifetimes to fulfill our soul's purpose. Thank God. <laughs> you know, so all of those individuals that I mentioned at the beginning, including Lilith, including your loved ones that have made their transition are all still here. That rich, vibrational, non-physical energy, which, you know, doesn't, ha it's non-local. It doesn't have a specific, you know, it's not like this narrow focus of a specific location. That's why two or more people, uh, in, no matter how far apart they are, they could be on two different continents, 
can actually feel the presence, that energy of that non-physical being at the same time. And, and this might blow your mind a little, we are right now in that non-physical vibration. The largest part of us is in that non-physical vibration playing with and collaborating with other non-physicals and sometimes we get a glimpse of that in our dreams. Anybody ever have a dream where somebody that has made their transition has you felt like they had made a visit? Anybody have that feeling in their dreams or in meditation sometimes? Yeah, that's because in our dream life, in our meditation, and some other things that we'll talk about in just a minute, we access that vibration, that higher level of being, that higher dimension, that non-physical energy. And this is the place where the angels hang out, where all the angels are, and where we can access the presence of divine beings. Jesus, if that speaks to you, or another ascended master or guru. That's the place that we can get to and open to that higher dimension and access that. No. But most of the time we're so physically, we're focused, so focused in this physical dimension that we have no idea. There's no awareness of what, you know, the larger part of us is doing or what the larger part of existence is doing or being, most of the time because we're so focused here. Uh, Charles Fillmore once said, the continuous existence of man after the death of the body is one of the facts of our spiritual life and should be so recognized. So I, I got to spend um, a few moments, a few precious moments in the months and weeks and days leading up to Lilith's um, uh, transition. And I think a few of you also did. And if you did, you, you know, I mean, it was an opportunity to witness somebody who was doing this consciously. She was doing this con She knew she was headed home. She knew she was headed into the arms of the divine you know, where there is no pain and no suffering and no attachment, just love. And even still, even still, she had a hard time letting go. You know? And I remember uh, talking to her kind of early on. I remember her saying to me, I've gotten so used to my physical body. You know, I, it's, it's served me so well. And I thought... Oh, yeah. How natural that is, that feeling. How natural that would be for all of us to play with the idea that, you know, this is kind of all we know. And to what, you know, what shape will we take after that? And the thing is, she worked through that. She worked through her attachment to the body. She worked through her attachment to things, to possessions. She worked diligently, consciously, to release old resentments, to heal all of those places that are unhealed. You know, she really did. She wanted to be at peace when that moment came, and she was. And she was. It's been said that birth is a greater shock to the system than death is. And when you look at it from the perspective that, you know, before we came here, right, we're dancing the limitlessness and eternality of divine love, and there's no, you know, it's all love, it's all beautiful. And then suddenly we are, we're coming to this world, and we're, we're you know, we into this limited, narrow viewpoint, and there's limitation, and sometimes confusion, and sometimes negativity. My God, no wonder we scream and cry. <laughs> We are brave souls, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. I say, I am a brave soul. <laughs> I'm a brave soul. And it makes you think, you know what? There must be a reason I did this. 
There must be a reason I came here and, you know, into this limited negative kind of separation idea. There's a reason. It makes us really think about that. There's definitely a reason. So I, I remember when um, my children were just born, and those of you new parents over there, you probably have experienced this. Anybody who has um, had a new baby, you know, for the first few days and for the first few weeks, I remember this sort of unfocused energy. You know, and they would kind of look around here, you know, seeing something I wasn't seeing. There was definitely something visible to them that wasn't visible to me. They were focusing on something that I couldn't see, very real to them. And it was almost like, you know, they weren't quite here. And one of them, in fact, I was really worried that she wasn't going to make it. You know, she was, had trouble eating and she had lost some weight and... I was really worried that she wasn't going to make that commitment to being here. But then, after a few weeks, bam. <clears throat> it's like both of them, like, I made the commitment. I am here fully, 100% in the physical. I am here. Right? <laughs> Have you made that? <laughs> made that commitment. I am here. Yeah. I'm going to love this. I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am here. I am so here ready to enjoy. Woohoo. We all do that. We all make this decision at some point to be here fully, to, to live our purpose, you know, to express our unique self to share of our gifts, to collaborate with others, to connect, to enjoy the pleasure of the physical experience in this beautiful place called Earth. What a grand opportunity we have. What a grand opportunity in this life to be here, to express our uniqueness and to grow and to enjoy life and to, and to be about our Father's business, to, to fulfill our potential and our purpose. What a great opportunity. We all have. You know? So, uh, so there is an ability that we have. We absolutely have an ability to connect still with that non-physical uh, vibration. I mean, if we could do that while we're here, focused in this human incarnation, and still have access to that divine energy, that wisdom, and that unconditional love, and that healing energy, and that powerful presence that is the larger, largest part of us, our divine self, we can connect with that and have access to that. Imagine what we could do. Really, imagine what that would be like. And we can do it. We can absolutely connect with it and channel that healing energy. Use that healing energy in our own lives. Use that, share that healing energy with others. We, we, we can connect with that incredible creativity and, and channel that into all of our activities. You know, into into music and dance and art and work and life and relationships and, and, or to just be uh, an inspiration to others, to inspire others, to, to, to be guided, to have that wisdom that will guide us to make important decisions, you know, or, or to solve problems, that the answers come from that place when we connect with that larger part of who we are which is absolutely, absolutely right here at our fingertips. So let's talk about some of those ways that we can do that, that we can connect with that. Now, I've already mentioned meditation, and sometimes in our dream life. Anybody else have an idea about how we can connect with that non-physical vibration? That, Play. Hmm? Play. Play. Well, that's a wonderful 
way to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any specific or just that energy of playfulness? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are accessing that sort of creativity and that joy that is so present in that energy, that vibration. Yeah. Anybody else? Any of the creative arts? Yeah. 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 Right, you're really, in, when you're in the flow, right, you're channeling that, ooh, that energy of the, the divine. Pete? Uh, just ask. Just ask. Yeah. Just ask, and then, and then be receptive. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Kathleen, did you? Yeah, yeah. It connects you with that energy because they're so close to that, just being there. They still have that energy. Yeah. Anybody else? Nature. Yes, being in nature, absolutely. Mm. I think that pets, animals in general, the whole animal uh, kingdom, uh-huh. they're just so natural. They are creatures. While you're petting your cat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're really connecting with that. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, so let's get into that receptive, as we talked about, being receptive, that receptive space together. Uh, and just really open to that expansiveness that we are, the fullness of our being. So I ask you just to, you know, get comfortable in your seat once again and... Close your eyes and begin to take a couple of deep breaths. <laughs> While they go out and play. <laughs> begin to breathe and connect with that energy. That breath is the thing, when we're conscious of it, that connects us with that flow of life, of divine life. Connects us with the infinite. Opening up, whether it's for you the third eye or the heart chakra or both. So consciously open that up to be receptive to that energy of the divine, that beautiful vibration of infinite love and light that is right here, that is a part of you, the largest part of who you are. Breathe that into your very being. And while you are breathing and receiving, I'd like to read a, a short passage from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Remember the clear light, the pure, clear white light from which everything in the universe comes, to which everything in the universe returns. The original nature of your own mind, the natural state of the universe unmanifest. Let go into the clear light. Trust it. Merge with it. It is your own nature. It is home. Continue to breathe that awareness into your being. And take a deep breath and begin to bring your awareness back into the here and now. Imagine if we lived our lives with the awareness of that continuity of being. 
and connected with that beautiful light, that beautiful love, that beautiful non-physical vibration. And allow that energy to channel through us, channel healing light, healing love into this physical, into our world. Imagine. Would we not be the light of the world? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Namaste. Namaste.